With just a few words of uh, introduction to the um, PAA, um, let, to let you know how we were organised, um, we have a president who's elected for a period of one year, uh, and then we have um, section directors, and they tend to be in post for quite a long time. So, for example, um, Dr. Richard Miles is the um, Remote Planet um, Director, and he's currently doing work on asteroids um, and measuring the rotation, rotational period by, um, by photometry. Um, I'm always keen to see younger people in the audience because Whenever I attend a, a meeting, we all seem to be getting older and uh, we do need to encourage youngsters um, to come forward. Um, Professor Leverage is the director of the lunar section and I think that's where um, most young, young people start um, to look at the night sky. Right. Um, I wasn't expected to be thrust into this role of um, presenting this because I had hoped that um, uh, Roger might have been here or one of the other main section, variable star section uh, people. We have um, a telescopic program and we also have a binocular program. Um, and an eclipsing binary um, section, and they use um, DES, just uses an ordinary um, DSLR mounted on a tripod with a fairly long focus telephoto lens. Well, coming, coming back to our database, um, we can start with the presentation. We have over 2 million visual and CCD observations. We are the oldest in the world with observations dating back to 1862. Over 2,000 stars are monitored. We have over 900 observers. Many, um, quite a few of the observers have um, modeled over a hundred, over a hundred thousand uh, observations. Thirty stars with more than ten thousand observations. What we do is we have a star, variable star of the year, and this year um, it is R R Tauri. Anyone can view light curves and download data using that link. Right, the history of the um, VSS database. The visual database established in the 1990s. have light curves and data tables which can be created quickly. We have had a very long period of loading historic observations that were in paper documents. So that's still all going. And it's still in use. Right, the visual database. The drawback of the initial database was that only the secretary had access to it.
therefore, um, he was required to um, produce data when requested. And if you have interesting files coordinating the load, loading of data uh, that was sent through to him. So his workload is quite heavy and he's given up this year. The CC, CCP database different, um, quite a different observation information to be recorded. In early 2000s, Andrew Wilson created a new database for the CCD data. He's the, um, he's the director of the computing section. Initially, just to test the, um, what we were doing, we just recorded a simple comparison star for the check star. Now records, it now records an unlimited number of comparison stars. Ideally, observers submit instrumental magnitudes to allow reduction of observations. However, the database also accepts simple derived magnitudes of the variable star only. Online database development it's necessary to redesign the databases so that it could be easily accessed via the internet. A graphic representation is also required in the form of a light curve. Also necessarily, the light curve could be manipulated so that different time sections of the data could be viewed, as well as the full plot. A search facility is added due to the number of recorded stars and the multiple designations that the star can have these days. Observer and filter details are also included as we will see. Finally, the online database goes live. Further January 2012, the new online database went live and it contains both the full visual and CCD observations. It enables anyone for easy review and download download data. This is merely phase one of a complete overhaul of the DAA VSS databases. Phase two will allow observers to submit observations online should they wish to do so. And I think that we have now reached the stage where um, phase two is um, capable of doing that for visual observations. Once this has happened, then the official and CC databases will be decommissioned. Accessing data. So that is our website. And this is how you um, can access light curves and other data and sections of light curves. Access the BAA VS database there. Review data for a star.
then submit the object you wish to see and the parameters. So we uh, picked RR Torai, which I explained was that very little start of the year. So we're not going to generate a light curve. That's a light curve for RR Tori. And it gives details of who the observers were. We want to go into a particular section of the light curve. It's going to be selected and zoom in. And it gives details of negative observations are across. Tri uh, triangle is brighter than otherwise circles is visual and the diamond is the CCD. The results of zooming in, we can zoom in further. So it enables you to um, look in detail at a particular um, part of the light curve. The result of zooming in further, the image of RR Tori and its associated uh, nebula by Graham Wells. observations are the buttons on the form. 
For a start, we do ask that our data be acknowledged. So we're complete to 2010, um, but it's ongoing for 2011. Other buttons, variable star, star alias names, observers and sequences. The variable star lists all the stars in the database more than 2,000. Star alias names, sequences just lists all sequences and other data of little interest to the average observer. Average observer. And observers, including summary, will take you here. So it gives the details of. Um, uh, in individual observers and they are from around the world and say what to pick what to pick up for example this will reveal a summary of what he's done in the old days to he was doing photographic um, work. And see how the explosion of CCD observations has taken over from visual. 4,008 visual and 73,000 CCD. And it gives details of the minimum and maximum, the variable, the number of observations and the minimum and the maximum magnitudes. The um, a, a database has the unique ability to re reduce magnitudes. This is immensely useful when sequence magnitudes are updated with improved photometry. This is made possible by two critical factors. The full measurement is recorded as in a visual observation B, 2B, 3C. I'm sure you are all familiar um, with that method. The database contains the sequence magnitudes. This means that observations spanning many years using different sequences can be reused to give results based on the same modern sequences of magnitudes. This capability is built into both the CCD and visual databases. The DAA VSS observing programs. The section divides the stars it observes into several programs. Telescopic, which consists of um, our old favourites, the Maras, that can be predicted, eruptives, CVs, and other types. Binocular, mainly red semi regulus. Recurrent objects generally cover, covers unobserved CVs with periods in excess of one year. Eclipsing binaries, mainly for visual observers, but CCD and DSLR now being contributed. You observe, you, uh, 
the advantage of doing visual observations is that um, you can monitor a star for quite a long period. And when you see something happening, an eruption taking place, for example, then the CCD observers can then concentrate on that object. Our visual observing programs is a nova supernova search in conjunction with deep sky section of the BAA and the astronomer magazine. Over 240 supernova discoveries have now been made by UK observers. So there's still work to be done if you're looking for a supernova. Eclipsing Nova, we set up an attempt to discover ellipses, eclipses in these objects. Identif identification, classification and correction of errors and also checking on the discovery of new observers. New variables. CCD designed to help those with CCDs to obtain scientific results and covers CVs in the main, but not exclusively. Because I think I found it quite difficult to get started um, with a CCD camera, having been a visual observer, and um, the help you can obtain from. Richard Miles and others, and we've also um, produced a, a guide um, on how to do this, which is on the counter there. The future. Online submission of data. Displaying both the date and the JD when viewing light curves. Option to display and download reduced magnitudes as well as your original observed magnitude. More as, as the need may arise. Summary. Online data is a great improvement on options on what was available until now. Previously, the director or secretary had to download and email observations to interested parties. Now that people can do it for themselves. And it's not impossible without the e efforts of the database secretary, Andy Wilson, to whom Roger is eternally grateful. So if you want to have a look, go into our website and um, you can do a search. I don't know if it's possible now to um, go online. So uh, currently, how is the reporting or submitting the observations being done? Uh, right now. So if I would want to uh, submit some observations, yes. how would I? Do it. Right, well, I'll, I'll sh um, hopefully I'll show you, uh, if you can go to our website, yeah. I'll show you how, to, how you can do that. Oh, yeah. Um, what, do you, are you a visual observer? Visual, yes. Right, um, well, that's uh, two methods. Um, one is to use an Excel um, spreadsheet. Yeah. And the other is to, um, is to use um, a script. Yeah. And I'll show you um, if you can get onto our website. Right, if you want to put your visual observations in, um, there's a visual report form. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And um, as I said, there are two methods. One is to um, use the Microsoft Excel um, spreadsheet. Yeah. 
Uh, you, should, you have uh, some kind of uh, pre-format in there? Yes, uh, we do. Yeah. Uh, So you can put it in that format, kind of. And I think that's the easiest method of doing it. Yeah. And then this has been uh, sent by email or downloaded? Yeah, just download it. Oh, download it by email and it will come through to us. Yeah. And, and it does. Uh, estimate column those uh, letters A and B refer yeah. the names given uh, to the conversion stuff in, in your own house. And that will, um, that will um, simply download. And um, we're using that same um, the CCD observations, um, use um, a piece of software. Um, it's AIW for win. Um, um, if you, if you, it will look at that piece of software and will enable you to do photometry. And then once you've done that, um, that data will be automatically linked from that piece of software into our database. Is this database also linked somehow to the AAPSO? Um, well, it's a separate. Um, we do have it to the AAPSO, and um, we're always a bit careful um, about how one should actually submit the data because um, there's a jeopardy of um, recording two, um, two sets. So if I were to record um, my observation to the AA BSO and into um, our own database. If there's a link between the two, my observations will be counted twice. So, um, I mean, I'm based in the UK and I have access to, um, if I need a device, I speak to uh, my own people. We also prepare our own, I haven't mentioned. So, I'll pick the first star I started on, which was U Aralis. Increasing the number, but it's the cost, isn't it? Of 
from setting up a telescope with a CCD camera. And I think that's been terrible um, for a lot of people. But as um, the price of CCDs comes down, I think we'll see more and more people using them. And of course, the other thing with the CCD, it's not quite, you need a much better mount and pointing facilities. Um, so, um, I changed my mount, uh, which is in my back garden, um, from, from something that had a really good pointing facility, and I'm doing visual observing. And um, now I've got a CCD camera. Um, I sit in my garage, in nice, nicely and warm, and I use Carpu Seal, which is a free um, piece of software um, to um, point the telescope and find the star that's quite close to uh, the object I'm looking at. So, if, say I'm looking at M101, I go to um, Eta Ursa uh, Majoris and then move the telescope from that point. I mean, it's, it's reasonably accurate with CCD to move my telescope from, uh, say, one, one part of the sky to another, say, several degrees. Um, the main problem is when the um, equatorial mount flips sides. Unless the um, telescope is completely um, in line with the mount, you'll get an error and it's of course twice the dif difference. Um, so, uh, the big advantage of um, my um, astrophysics 900 uh, mount is you can move, you can continue um, observing past the meridian for up to six hours. And then software correct for this. And maybe later on we can write. I mean, you can, I mean, I think, you know, there are several methods of, um, of, of doing that. One is um, if you use Maxim D, I've got a facility called Max Point, which I've not tried. Um, and the other is T Point. Um, if you want to go for T point, you have to buy um, software discs, um, the Sky X, and the T point's an add on. And I believe that is um, a lot more efficient in its pointing accuracy than the Max point. A lot more expensive. And a lot, a lot more expensive when you think you can buy, you know, Carpe Seal, which is very good, very good um, free. Um, so, um, program and you can download, I mean it will find any variable star that you want to, to look for and it will find, um, it will find an asteroid, it's, I think it's, I think there are 2,000 asteroids um, recorded. Um, the big disadvantage of Cartier Sioux if you're looking for asteroids is that um, it's not linked to the Minor Planet Center. I think you can download uh, yourself and you get all the couple elements. Would that be? Yes. So, um, with, with, this, um, with that, I think every other piece of software here, for example, um, there's I think there's six or seven different pieces of software where the um, Minor Planet Center sends, um, has a link. And I've, I've, I've sent them an email saying you can't put Carpu C on it. Because if you could, you can then, on the Minor Planet Center's um, website, you can select the uh, asteroid you're interested in and it come down. But the variant is no problem. Um, it's got all the NGC objects on it. There's even free software for pointing. It would be nice to have a piece of free software. Yeah, there is. 
you should have found the, at, uh, wherever you are you're pointing on the, on, on the sky. Yeah. I forgot the name, because I'm using CCD commander and uh, you need the uh, Maxim Gear uh, pinpoint uh, for plate solving. But there is something else, but I forgot the name. So the, but it's free. Well, I'll go for it. Anything free I go for. <laughs> Yeah, you can use Maxim the other principle, you can try a CCD command as well, and it has, I think, 45 day uh, uh, free access. So for parking, I mean, if you move from the uh, west to east uh, on your mount, and you do not have a good parking, you can at least correct it. Well, I've got Maxim DL, so... Uh, yeah, it should work. So I'll try that. Yeah. Thank you very much. CCD command.